Hello! Today we're going to talk about doing Excel charting in SharePoint Online. This is a great, easy option for you to do basic charts in SharePoint Online. Today we're going to take a look at getting the chart set up in the Excel workbook, getting that loaded to SharePoint, and then using the File Viewer web part, which is one of the modern web parts for modern pages in SharePoint Online. So we're going to go through this setup and in a future video, in a second part, we're going to show how you can make this dynamic by using workflow to automatically populate the workbook and update that data so that you have a dynamic chart in SharePoint Online. So now we're ready to begin. Let's get SharePoint smart. All right, so we're gonna be working in our Excel workbook. I have a plain vanilla Excel workbook. I really haven't done anything to it, except for one thing. I made a couple of tabs. I've got a tab which I call data, and a tab I call chart. And the first thing I wanna do is, I'm gonna set up a table of dummy data. And this is what you should do also, um, just to get something going and see a chart. And Later, what we'll do is hook up to the SharePoint data and make this dynamic and have a feed that will change and auto-populate that for us. But for now, we're just gonna set up some fields. We're just doing preliminary setup uh, right now. Um, so um, let me uh, just make the columns a little wider. So I'm gonna do a field for SharePoint ID, the title, which will eventually come from the SharePoint list. And this is for an example with a help desk system where we're gonna track the status of tickets over time. So we'll have some different statuses that we're looking at. We'll have one for new help desk tickets, uh, ones that are updated to in progress. Um, and then we'll do one for on hold and last of all, complete. Okay, so that's my table. Um, just to save time, I did um, set up some uh, dummy data ahead of time. So I'm just gonna paste that in here real quick. Um, so what you can see is we have a series of uh, weeks that we're tracking. We wanna know uh, the status of those tickets for the particular week. So this is what you call aggregating data. This is um, a total of the status that's being reported on a weekly basis, okay? And once you do this, you do want to define this as a table, and that's gonna set up some things that we're gonna do later on when we connect up with the workflow. So that's real easy to do. I can just come in here and format as table. Um, I can just pick one of these options, click on it, and um, it, you just confirm this. Yes, my table has headers, um, hit okay. That's it, and you'll notice when I'm in the table, um, it will automatically give it a name. Um, I was in here earlier, so it says table two, but normally it'll say table one. In any case, you definitely wanna know what the name of that table is, because you will reference to that later. Okay, that's all I need to do for my data. Okay, so now we wanna chart based on that. I'm gonna do that in this separate tab, and I'm just gonna come in here and click on the insert and you know go to the charting area and um, I'll just pick this first option and you know resize this I want a nice big chart and then I need to do what I need to select my data okay um, so I'm just going to pop open to my first tab and all I got to do is just select that data hit OK and Excel's pretty smart. It's been around for a long time and it kind of knows what to do. Um, I just hit OK and boom, very quickly I have a chart set up. And then as we discussed, Excel charting has been around forever. It's got all kinds of bells and whistles, all th kinds of things you can do. Um, and there are lots of videos and things that will help you if you 
you know, want to geek out and do all kinds of fancy stuff in Excel. And you should do that if you, if you really want to um, use this technique a lot. So I know, for example, that I want to see the legend. So um, I'm going to make that show up on the right. You know, that helps people know. I want to know what these bars mean. Okay, blue is the new tickets, orange is in progress, etc. Okay, that's about everything I need to do on the initial setup in Excel. So what am I going to do? I'm going to save that. And um, I can close that right now. And now I'm going to just pop right over to SharePoint. Okay, so um, we're going to go in here and I'm going to do what? I'm going to load my Excel workbook to my SharePoint site where I want to show this chart, right? Okay, so I'm just going to go to the regular old documents library that's in um, SharePoint on each of the sites. And what I'm going to do is um, upload that file. So um, let me drag and drop that over there. Okay, so here it is. Um, I just drag and drop it in. It's uploading. Okay, so I call this Excel chart in SP. Okay, I just kind of want to remember that. And then once I've done that, I'm going to make a page. This is where we get to the fun part. So I just go to new page. Okay, and I'll just call it um, my Excel chart and SharePoint online. Yay. Okay. Um, I'm going to get rid of this name thing here. I don't like that. And also, I don't need a banner. I want to really kind of focus on the chart here. So I do normally like to put in banners, but in this case, all the attention is on the chart. If you pick plain, that'll collapse that down for us. That's what we want to do in this case. And generally you want to show one chart on, on a page, otherwise it's going to get too busy. Because you can just keep creating more and more charts and just link from other pages. Okay, so then I'm going to click in the middle here on the plus, and what do I want? This is called the file viewer. It knows I used it recently, so it's on top, but another thing you can do is just type in um, that term and it'll help find it quickly. So they've actually improved this interface recently. Okay, file viewer. Okay, it says, okay, file viewer, and which file are we viewing? Okay, and it just gives me a list of recent options. Again, SharePoint's kind of being smart here. It says, eh, you probably want to take a look at something that you were working with recently. All right, click insert, and boom, there's my chart. Well, that's exciting. Now, you almost would think you're done at this point, but there's a couple of things we can do here, and uh, we'll just take care of that. So in the file viewer web part, you can actually configure the option. So it's saying entire workbook. I don't actually want to show the entire workbook. I just want that chart, right? And Microsoft has done a good job for us. They actually have an option and I can pick chart. Now you do need to know the name of that chart. Okay, so um, when I was in the uh, workbook, We'll bring that back here in just a second. We want to check that name. That's important to us. So I'll go to that. And it is called chart two. Whenever you create a new workbook, it just automatically updates that. So the first one you make, it's just going to call it chart one. And you can rename that if you want to. That's up to you doesn't really matter. I wouldn't worry about that, but you do need to know the chart name. Okay. There's chart two. I hit apply. Okay. You can see how that updated. I don't see the grid anymore. I don't see any of the extra stuff. None of that. We just see the chart and that's exactly what we wanted to happen. So now I can close that panel. I can publish my page and there it is. Now it takes a while to refresh, it's working on that, and there's my chart. Now, another thing that's cool about this, and this is key to our next part that we're gonna look at when we make it dynamic, this isn't a static chart. It will update based on the data that's in the workbook. So if I go and open this in the browser, I'll just do that real quick, and let's, just for the fun of it, let's update some data. We don't have any on hold right now, but let's change that. Say so there's loads of tickets on hold now. 
Okay, so just as you would expect, the chart's gonna change. There's the gray line. And then, um, you know, I'm done with that. I can close out of that. It auto saves for me, so we're good there. Now it won't instantly update, but if we're patient and we give it a little bit of time, it will update that feed for it. So it's dynamic. Um, again, it's not necessarily instantaneous. There's some background processes and things that have to happen um, with this file view or web part, but it will, um, after a period of time, update for us. And it's wanting to take its time. I kind of mess with it a little bit. So it's gonna think about that some. There you go, see how that's updated? Um, that big gray lines there, because I just updated the data. So this is refreshing for us automatically, and that's exactly what we want to happen. So that's really good. And we've done everything we need to do to surface that chart. Anytime that data is gonna change, this chart's gonna page. And I can make all kinds of charts. I just make a new page for every chart that I wanna do. And that's definitely the approach you wanna take. All right, so that's all the steps we needed to do. All right, so let's talk about where we are and what we would want to do next. This first part's easy. You just start in Excel and you want to um, set up some dummy data, set up your fields, set up that table, and get the chart to look how you want, put it on a page. And this is definitely where you want to begin. And then what we're going to get to in the next video is actually the trickier part. Because what we really want to happen is to automatically move data from SharePoint over into the Excel workbook automatically. And we're gonna do that through workflow and we're gonna use Power Automate to get that done. And that is the um, key part about being able to create dynamic charts um, with SharePoint and Excel. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll do this quick practice example. And then when you're ready, I hope you'll tackle the next challenge, which is setting up a workflow to move that data from SharePoint over to the Excel workbook. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.